existing house. That's, that's a sucker's bet. What you want to do is you want to buy a piece of raw land and build a house on it. That's the way to go. <laughs> so they come back to my guy and say, what have you been showing us houses for? Show us vacant land. That's what we need to do. And they tell him about this conversation. And my guy says, I don't know anything about selling vacant land. I mean, I can, I can do an MLS search like anybody else, and I can write a contract for you and so on and so forth. But I don't know anything about buying raw land, selling raw land, building houses. I don't know anything about it. It's not my specialty. Um, they say, don't worry about it. We've got this contractor. He's going to walk us through everything. Um, all you have to do is find us the lot. <clears throat> he finds them a lot. Um, Nice little, you know, uh, probably quarter of an acre. Um, got some decent views. Um, he again says, I don't know anything. You know, you've got to talk to somebody because I don't know if you can even build a house on this lot. I don't know how big a house you can build on it. I don't know anything about this sort of stuff. Um, it's located in an area where there's other houses that are built. So everybody sort of assumes that you can build a house on this lot. They buy it. Um, they get a percolation test. Uh, I don't know if you guys have septic systems around here, but there's a lot of them in San Diego, and one of the things you have to get is a percolation test. Percolation completely fails. Uh, and the reason for that is that the perk standards have changed dramatically since all these other neighboring houses have been built. And anyway, this land is virtually undevelopable uh, until somebody finally brings city sewer up to it, which they could do for about, you know, a million dollars a foot. <laughs> so anyway, they can't do that. So, uh, <coughs> so anyway, they, they sue him. Um, they sue the seller, uh, and that the seller actually takes the property back. But they sue my guy as well uh, for all these damages that they've allegedly suffered. And uh, as I'm talking to him, he says, you know, I told them I didn't know anything about this. I told them I don't know anything about raw land. I don't know anything about building properties. I told them to talk to their, you know, their broker about all this or uh, their contractor about all this stuff. I said, great, did you do any of that in writing? And he said, no. I said, okay, we're dead. Uh, I tend to say that when I... <laughs> I always go into these things sort of pessimistically. But anyway, I said, well, here's what we'll do. We'll depose these two whiz wheels and we'll, uh, we'll see what they say. I said, odds are they're going to say what every buyer says, which is what? I don't know. He never said anything to me about that. I told, he told me he was an expert, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I wasn't looking forward to taking these two people to trial. They were, you know, good-looking young couple in their 20s, just dumber than a bag of hammers. Both of them just complete idiots. Uh, I mean, nice, nice folks, but just, just idiots. Um, and I mean that in the nicest way. But uh, I deposed. I deposed uh, the Mister, and I, you know, I said, now didn't Mister so and so? Um, tell you that he didn't know anything about raw land. Oh yeah, he told us that. I said, didn't he tell you that he didn't have any idea whether you could build on this property or not? Oh yeah, no, he, he was very explicit about that. Didn't he tell you that in order to, to really, before you closed escrow, that you should consult you know, a, a contractor, an engineer? Oh, absolutely, he told us to do all that. Did you do any of that? No. Why are you suing Mr. Uh, Mr. So-and-so? Well, because we can't build on this property. We lost all this money. So anyway, I said, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, he actually told the truth. So we deposed the wife the next day, and she does the same thing. She tells the truth. And I said, well, Dan, that was his name. Dan, I said, y you got a little bit of a shot here, because lo and behold, these two people came in. Evidently, they weren't prepped by their lawyer before they came into their depot, because they told the truth. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we, we didn't have enough time left to make a motion to get out of the case. So we ended up having to go and we had to try the case. And uh, for a day and a half, the plaintiff's counsel put on his case and then when he was done, I made a motion. It's called a motion for non-suit, which basically says, we'll admit that everything they've just said is true, uh, they still don't have a case. And the judge agreed with us and he dismissed the case after a day and a half of trial because he said, yeah, I mean, he did, he told you that he wasn't the expert in any of this stuff. He didn't do anything wrong. Um, so what's the moral of the story? Well, the moral of the story is not to rely on having naive, dumb clients that will tell the truth when deposed. The moral of the story is that that is the one time in 13 years of practice and probably 700 uh, lawsuits that I've defended that I've ever seen that happen. In every other instance, you know, buyers come in and 
you know, they've forgotten the English language, they've forgotten everything. I, I had a why I had a David and I took a case to trial. I swear to God, this guy was a geotechnical engineer. He was the head of one of the biggest geotechnical engineer firms in the world, a company called Mac Tech. Uh, they design bridges, they do all this stuff. Uh, he claimed to have no knowledge of geotechnical engineering. We put him on the stand and we went through his credentials and said, how are you not an expert in this field? Well, I work in the sales department now. That was his, uh, that was his uh, response. So again, try to get everything in writing because most of the time you're going to get people who when the rubber meets the road are going to either lie outright or going to bend the heck out of the truth. Yes, Jim. Um, <coughs> you know, the information you're giving is fantastic. Thank you're you. Gonna, you're going to run out of, uh, we're going to run out of time. Can All right. you skip rep to the disclosure issues? I can. And then the next time you're up here, we'll pick up okay. five and seven. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, disclosure issues. The seller is the key. Okay. Uh, what David means by this is he always calls the seller the gatekeeper of the disclosure issues. Why? Well, not surprisingly because they're the ones that own the property and most of the time they're the ones that live there. Um, so seeing as how the seller is, is the key to all of this, um, what you need to do is you need to kind of explain to your sellers um, the significance of disclosing uh, everything that they know about the property. Um, and this will probably dovetail into what Jim will, will talk about at a, at a later date. Um, uh, he alluded to it earlier with the, the thing about the agent who was <coughs> listing a property for a friend. Um, but one of the things that, that you've got to remember um, when you're dealing with your sellers is, you know, tell them, um, do, or ask them, uh, make sure that you disclose things that, that may have been problems, um, even if you think that they've been fixed, um, go ahead and disclose them, especially, yes, green shirt, go ahead. Uh, it looked like you had your hand up. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. Didn't, I, didn't know, uh, I didn't know you were exercising, all right. Feel, feel, anybody want to, feel um, so anyway, the, the seller, the seller is obviously the uh, you know the well from which all the disclosures are going to come. Um, use the seller property questionnaire. Why? Because it's better than the TDS. I mean, it, it really does ask it's a, the it's seller. A it's a requirement. That's all. Is it okay? Yeah. Good. You are required to use the STQ. So <laughs> now you really better use it. Um, <coughs> and why? Okay, I, I won't go into that. It's it's a good form. Um, how to require the use of the seller uh, of the SPQ? Well, Jim has just told you you have to. But what if you're not representing the the seller? What if you're representing the buyer and it's you know some horrible you know Shorewood agent or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <that's doing> <laughs> hey, I can I can say that I'm from San Diego. I don't I don't, I don't do anything with Shorewood. Um, uh, so what if you're representing uh, a buyer and you're, you know, the, you're not sure if you're going to get the SPQ? Well, most of the time, I mean, pretty much everybody in the industry is using the SPQ at this point. But if you really want to guarantee it, put it in a counter or put it in, I'm sorry, put it in the offer, uh, seller to provide a uh, seller's property questionnaire, you know, uh, within so many days or, you know, co concurrent with delivery of TDS, something like that. So if you're worried about it, if you're dealing with an office that maybe you don't it's know if they're in. going to. It's built into the office. Just check the box. Okay. All right. Then there you go. You can you can just check the box and, and you're good to go. Um, sellers oh, yeah. quote historical records. What do these mean? Uh, these typically mean any kind of reports or issues that your seller may have that are in writing. Because uh, if your seller has ever had anybody come out to the property and look at it and issue anything that is even remotely derogatory about the property. I guarantee it will wind up in the new buyer's hands. I don't know how it happens. It always does. They have a problem two weeks af after escrow. Lo and behold, they will call the one person that that seller called uh, about the same issue, and that same person will say, oh my god, yeah, I was out there two years ago and told them it was the worst problem I'd ever seen. Um, so any kind of reports, whatever, that your seller may have, especially if you are um, in areas that have certain issues like I don't know, a hillside area that might be known for having some geotechnical concerns. You might have a seller that has had somebody come out to the property and give them a, uh, a geotechnical 
readout or you know some sort of reconnaissance survey. If they've got something like that, make sure it makes it into the disclosure.